What's poppin' with the population? What's Gucci with the gang? This is another episode of Do Rag with the Kid Roll. As you see, it's your host, me, here to give you another installment pause of stuff that's going on in my head. Um, obviously, there's a lot happening as far as the media, depending on what part of the media you are paying attention to, what parts are catching your eye depending upon your algorithm and how you are consuming content because it's all about what you click on not about what you like um when it comes to the algorithm that's the one part that i'm starting to understand uh it's like day 100 and whatever of the war in gaza and how the stolen palestine aka israel is um currently just doing what they've been doing, taking lives of people that shouldn't be uh, losing their lives and claiming that they are after a terrorist cell, but there's no proof of them even doing any damage to said cell and actually taking more lives of innocent people than anything else. I had the eye-opening displeasure of listening to the audio of Hind. I believe I got that young girl's name right. She's like six years old. It actually kept me up. This desperate call for help was from Hind, a six-year-old Palestinian girl who has been missing in Gaza since the 29th of January. She was trapped inside a car, surrounded by the bodies of her family members, all of them killed by Israeli fire. According to the Palestine Red Crescent Society, they were fleeing northern Gaza when they were attacked by Israeli forces. I didn't go to sleep until like 5 in the morning, and then in turn when I went to go train, I was dog tired and had to push through it because I was just up, just, just neurotic, just thinking, like, why would someone do that? But if you know the story, I think I think the little girl's name was Hain Rajab, um, six years old. Excuse me, I don't think she was in Rafa. I forgot where she was at exactly in Palestine, but um, she was in a car, I think, or somewhere with her dead. Like she was surrounded by family members who no longer had their life, and she was crying and calling for help from an organization that was going to help her and they were on the phone with her for several for, for several hours I want to believe I believe ended up getting an ambulance to the young girl and was able to rescue her and a couple of her family members that were alive and then the connection between the ambulance and the organization kind of went silent for a while and then when they found out what happened the little six-year-old girl along with her five family members that were alive and the two ambulance drivers were all found to be not alive anymore. Just moments before, there was a call from Hind's cousin, 15-year-old Lion Hamaday, who was shot at while on the phone. <laughs> and the excuses by the powers that be are just like, they just make absolutely no sense. But I was having a conversation with a homie at the gym yesterday and he asked like, what's going on with the system? Like, how do we fix it? And I'm like, that's the problem right there that you think that it's broken. The system is working exactly how it's supposed to because at the end of the day, all of these things that we have right now are stuff that we made up. Like this phone, this microphone I'm on, them sneakers right there, that hat, this laptop, all these things are just things we made up off of humans reacting to what is around them. The earth is the only thing that is what it is. We have nothing to do with it. Everything else we have complete and utter control over outside outside of like, obviously like, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about like anatomic things like your breathing and deafness. I mean, I'm talking about like your heartbeat and death and stuff like that. But I'm talking about like things like creating these things we have control over and we are choosing to subject ourselves to said system. And the people that have the power 
realize the only way that we can keep them this way is to make them think that they need these things. One of my favorite comedians, Dick Gregory, made a real genius observation when he said, you know, we live on this planet. You ever seen a hungry gorilla? I mean, outside of one being in like a zoo or maybe going through some human-made famine. Have you ever seen a hungry gorilla? No, because they're going to eat, right? Because they could just pick bananas. I mean, there's that video of uh, Orlando Brown spazzing about um, people buy, like having to pay for water and fruits. It's like, Apples! Things that God gave us for free? Like, yeah. We made this up. Capitalism, we made up. All these systems we made up. So those people that are passing over, that are losing their lives because of colonialism and imperialism is because of a system that was made up by humans. Like the fact that stolen, um, stolen Palestine, AKA Israel, is able to do what it does should further prove the point. Because people are like, oh, it's the, uh, you know, you'll have like people get super anti-Semitic when it comes to like Jewish people. And they're like, oh, it's this and the third, it's the power, they, they run this, they do that. It's like, no. Overall, it's capitalism and Zionism and Judaism are not the same thing. Can you help us make sense of this? We often see we're hearing now rise of anti-Semitism. Can we label this this in Jerusalem anti-Semitism that the media is not reporting out at all? You don't really hear much talk about this. I get a lot of these clips from on on X and you'll see Torah, true Torah Jews or this, and they post a lot of this stuff and you'll see a lot of this uh, happening. Can you help us make sense of it? There are a lot of different types of anti-Semitism. There was the anti-Semitism of the Christians in the Middle Ages that told the Jews you either have to convert or will kill you, which means they had their anti-Semitism was against the Jewish religion. And if you uh, practice Christianity, they're okay with you. Then there's the anti-Semitism of Hitler that said it doesn't matter if you practice christianity the jewish blood that you have and it was his definition of jewish blood it, we're going to kill you anyway the zionists are also anti-semites but they're anti-semites against the anti-zionist jewish religion they don't uh actual jews that just study judaism and just do what they do as jews have nothing to do with zionism zionism is an ideology that ties more into cult-like theory, but um, nationalism. And there are nationalist Jewish people like that, but those Zionists don't like those Jewish people that are just living their Jewish life. And the, the wild thing with Zionism is what they did is they weaponized anti-Semitism. And that anti being Semitic, Jewish people are Semitic, Arab people that they're currently taking the lives of in Gaza and other places in the um, in that surrounding area are Semitic. Um, nevertheless, what Zionism did is they took and weaponized anti-Semitism, where that they basically are they use it against any and everybody that is not for their cause, and because Zionists are actual anti-Semites, they don't like non-Zionist Jews. They don't like people who talk about Zionism. They then demonize those who are aware of what's going on as anti-Semitic when they say anything about Zionists and they equate that to Judaism. It's not the same. What they did is just attack, like almost like a cancer attached themselves to a theological belief system and a, in an ethnic group of people for a gain in the world where they can basically do what they want. But in 2019, this practice of silencing pro-Palestine voices was legitimized when former President Donald Trump signed an executive order that enforced the IRA definition on college campuses. The biggest problem is a chilling effect. We see lawsuit after lawsuit and complaint after complaint targeting activists on campus, targeting administrators, targeting professors. We literally have cases based on somebody had a sign that said river to the sea. So you're, you're claiming it's a, it's a hate crime. By the way, it's worth noting that the guy who drafted the IRA definition later spoke out against how it's been weaponized. And they're just a bigger part of the whole, which is capitalism, because a lot of people try to understand what is this all for? 
And really, it's for money when you think about it. When it's wild, when you think about currency, like as far as being in America, it says in God we trust on money. So who's your gut? Like, not even to get all spiritual, but if who are you praising? So is the dollar over God? What is happening right now? Like you have uh, the Biden administration like, yo, we're going to give Israel 45 days to let us know if they committing international crimes. Oh, you think Palestinian people got that much time left? Like what's, what's happening, fam? It's like you have to listen so you don't get caught up in the, in the stupidity. Or even now, like, great thing is like Joe... Joe, sorry, John Stewart is like back on the air. And he was, it was, it's really, it's even easier for him to make jokes now than it was when he was, excuse me, when he was on the air. But he just was shooting some, some real easy layups about Biden and Trump and the age thing and everything else. And the liberal media immediately attacks him for it, claiming ageism. And that you're trying to get Trump into office and all of these things when he's pointing out the obvious of any of those things. And, at, and the examples and stuff that they were using to justify Biden's deterioration in front of our eyes is, oh, but Robert De Niro and Al Pacino are having babies. First of all, ill. Second of all, they're actors. And then they're like, oh, but Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters and Bernie Sanders is in office still. Yeah, they probably shouldn't be there anymore. Like, what are we doing? And, I mean, I'm, as a kid, when, like I've brought up on episodes before, I used to cut school and watch C-SPAN. So I've seen, like, Maxine Waters and Bernie Sanders my whole life. And they've been kind of on the ball as far as, like, they haven't had any, like, cognitive, like, decline. But that shouldn't be a thing we're celebrating in elected officials. These are people that are supposed to be representatives, right, of the demos. Demos is the people, right? We shouldn't be celebrating the fact that they don't have any cognitive de decline. That's like me getting in an Uber or whatever and praying that this person doesn't crash, like that they have their driver's license. What are you, that's the bare minimum. What are we talking about? Like, I know from living the life that I've lived, that all I got to do really is stay black and die because at the end of the day, everything that's happening in between is like none of my, it's not, it's, it's not none of my business, but it's not something that is uh, going to stop me from staying black and dying peacefully. So when you look at what's going on, you see how like, I said what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in the Congo, what's going on in Sudan, uh, what's going on in Sahel with, with, with Burkina Faso, um, I think Mali, and, Ni and Niger. And you, and you see like, oh, uh, what's going on in Venezuela? Um, you see like, oh, like, it's really just about money. Like, human life means absolutely nothing to people who want money and money means everything to people who have money because they look at money as power and power is for the weak because money is weak you can just tear it it means nothing it's only what we think it means which is absolutely nothing but you have this current situation we have <coughs> excuse me going on where <coughs> As far as in America, the corporation that is America, the election is November 4th, right? You have Biden, who's the incumbent, who's running. He doesn't know where he is. One of the most devastating wars in recent history continues to unfold in Gaza as we speak. Nearly 100,000 people have been killed, injured. And then the possible challenger which everybody think is going to be, is Donald Trump who's lined up for wild felonies. Like he's, he's going to court. It's probably going to be a felon by the time he's like running. I mean, by the time like elections, like the election happens. 
And people are like, how is that even a thing? How can you run and be a convict? It's like, well, I forgot what, I'll put it in, in post. But there was a politician that was running, was running in their position from jail. Like, you can do that because the system is stupid. That's why. Like, the whole thing that we're currently living in makes absolutely no sense. Because it's all about money. Because money is their God. I mean, look at somebody like, for instance, Joel Alstein. Right? He has a mega... Why do you have a mega church? That makes no sense, right? I thought God was in my heart. Like, church is cool. It should be a place where people congregate. But if a mega church and you're making wild bread, right? And you had the, the flooding happen in, I think it was Houston, and you didn't open your doors to anybody, but you got a mega church making money. Then you have a woman who recently went in, you know, blessed those souls, but she went in shooting, killed a couple people. I think a, a bullet is lodged in her baby's brain because she spazzed on and shot that place up. I don't know what her reasoning was, but the money that you spent on that mega church could have possibly been used for whatever was going on in that woman's life and in, and in the lives of so many other people. You have the other situation where, again, everything is about money. People are celebrating the Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl because that was a conservative conspiracy side up that... Uh, it's like they polled some Republicans. I don't know what the age range was. I don't know what the ethnic demographic or cultural demographic of these people were, but they 32% of them believe that Taylor Swift um, is in this deep government um, mission to get Biden to be president again. And those people need to just stay home. Just don't go talk. Don't talk to people. Don't answer polls anymore. But they won the Super Bowl. The Chiefs did, or the Kansas City Swifts, whichever, whatever you want to call them. They had a parade, I think, yesterday, or I don't, I don't remember the day exactly. I think it was yesterday, uh, or the day, or the day before, or whatever. There was a, it was a mass shooting, and they're still trying to figure out what was going on. And I think a couple of people lost their life. Like, what? There's more, ha like, the issues that are happening in this world, in this society can be quelled, like we could figure out why. And supposedly the lady that did the shooting at Joel Austin's church, if, there, if the red flag laws were instituted in regards to being able to check somebody who has like mental health, who's been considered someone with mental health issues or some kind of problems from having a, a firearm, if those laws that Greg Abbott didn't want to be a thing were passed, she probably wouldn't have had the gun in the first place to do what she did. I think she had a legal firearm. You hear arguments like, no, we need this and that, and then arguments against it, and then people think like, and then everybody's life from a Democrat to a Republican to a conservative to a liberal to a person that doesn't care gets gets lost because bullets don't have any political affiliation. You You wonder like, why do these politicians, these elected officials, remember, these are people that people voted for. Why do these people that are supposed to represent the people that they that voted them in, why do they allow these things to go on and not look for any safe measures or anything to like make things better? And it's because money. Like, the two things that America makes really well, the business, the corporation that is America makes really well, is fat kids and guns. Some of the top gun companies from my last research it could have changed but are american like they're like western based like could have changed and i say fat kids because if you look at our foods and whatnot but my saving grace in all of this for me is the fact that i know i can just stay black and die that doesn't mean I'm not going to try to do anything as far as like positive where I, where I can, you know, use my voice. You know, the person, uh, actually speaking of my voice, um, this is really cool. Someone who, cause I have like, I think 112 subscribers. I'm trying to get more, but someone who was listening to my content actually asked to donate money to me, which I thought was insane. Like I thought that was amazing. His name is, 
believe his name is Damien. I don't want to get that wrong, but I believe his name is Damien because that's, that's what it was on Instagram. Uh, nice person donated me money, which I thought was like super dope. Like I didn't know people cared that much about what I was saying because I'm just doing this so I don't, you know, spin in circles because when I'm not at the gym, I'm just like sitting in the house watching uh, intellectual stuff about random stuff and then cartoons or whatnot. So this is just all just coming off the top type. Like I do write down a little like, uh, have like a little breakdown of what I want to talk about, but then I just freestyle from there. So realizing that I have a voice put me in a place of understanding that things like this need to be said that stolen Palestine, which is, is which is what some may call Israel, um, is just a representation of the system as a whole. It's barbaric, it's contradictory, it's it claims to be religious, but it's really just like a zealot, but not even, they don't even follow the religion for real. So it's, it's, it's just, it's just tyranny. It's fascist. It's, it's tyrannical. That's what the system is. So that's what I was telling my homeboy that the system as it is, is running perfectly fine. The wild part about this that I came to a conclusion with when I was staying up all night watching and listening about Hein, the young six-year-old girl that passed away, um, was that this system has to be this way for them, the people with money. Because if it breaks down at any point where people are like, I'm just going to pull my labor. Because that's all you really got to do. It's a capitalistic system. They need money. So if you stop working, if you stop feeding into the system, things will change. That's why they hate unions. Because unions are the only thing in the system. Unions are a part of the system, but they're also anti cult, like anti the system. The only reason why they still exist is because there's some unions that play into the hands of the system, but then there's some that don't. So when the ones that don't play into the hands and do what they're supposed to do, that's why you don't really hear that much media coverage about it, or it's really like quick hit or miss, like you had the UAW or whatever protesting, you had the pilots protesting and wanting new contracts where that was like media, that was news, right? But it wasn't covered as heavy as it should have been. And the reason being is because Unions are anti the system while at the same time they are the system. In that you have the dude that's ahead of UAW where he was big on like talking uh, cash about like, yo, a uh, mass protest in 2026, something like that. He was just talking cash, whatever about that. But then at the same time, not too long after that, he was talking about like, hey, uh, we're going to support Joe. I'm proud to stand up here with your International Executive Board and announce that the UAW is endorsing Joe Biden for President of the United States. But it's like you just were saying you wasn't. That's how you play. That's how the union plays both sides. With Unions are good to dis help dismantle the system, but they still play into it. The real ultimate thing is removing your labor from the system. But again, I can go in for days about how that's how you dismantle it but when you look at like how these things are and what we can do is you can use your voice to call it out the other thing that we miss with all of this information that we can get especially living in the states is that living in the u.s living in some of these western uh, places that have more uh freedom so to speak in ways is that we have we have the freedom to think that we're free. Um, we can have these conversations. I can say these things and not worry about getting arrested. There's people, there's Israeli people who are protesting what's going on in Gaza that are getting arrested and doing like 20 years. Entertainment, but still faces charges from the state of Israel. He was also illegally fired from his job. But on January 19th, the Tel Aviv Regional Labor Court reversed Barukin's termination. 
Barukin told Haaretz that the ruling is a bright spot in the dark place that we have been in recent months, where Israeli citizens who express opposition to what is happening in Gaza are politically persecuted, publicly condemned, lose their livelihoods, and in some cases are thrown into detention. Upon returning to teach his 10th grade history class, he found that students not only refused to attend his class, but they organized a demonstration against him. His own students, the next generation of Israeli society, cursed and spit on him. Some Jewish Israelis do in fact manage to show solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza or criticize the Israeli military without being detained or arrested, but even still, they face brutal social consequences. Yael Ayalan was the principal of Tel Aviv's Ironi Yod Daled High School. After posting on Facebook about the lack of Israeli media coverage on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, her students led a fanatic mob attack against her on school grounds. They screamed, demanding she go home, and even threw trash at her. Ayalan was suspended from her principal position at the high school and, according to Haaretz, forced to the municipality where she was asked, presumably by government officials or police, to undergo a so-called educational process. During possible 20 years or whatever for tweets and, because and, I refuse to say whatever Elon Musk calls tweets now, and Facebook posts for just being like, yo, this is not right. Um you realize like, oh, communication rules the nation. If you could have all the people that have problems with what's going on in the system, have a conversation with each other, hash out whatever differences they have, then you will have those people realize who they should actually be mad at and who they should actually direct their angst towards. And if you do that, then that's when you get into the, the, the concepts of the eat the rich kind of thing. And you start to realize, like, oh, this is like what Occupy Wall Street was trying to get on. But then it got weird. Like, I was actually at some of those Occupy Wall Street um, protests. And it was it was disorganized, to say the least. The idea was there, but the fact that we was sitting in a park right across the street from banks and nobody was, like, vandalizing the bank or, like, even just sleeping outside of the bank made no sense. It was just a lot of things that made no sense to me with that. But when you look at this, you see like, oh, it's communication that can bring us together. So you have Hein, the young girl that loses her life along with the ambulance drivers and her family members, right? You have her, her in the media. They're not really talking about her like that. Like, there are people, like, tweeting and posting whatever about her, but, like, they aren't bringing up that little girl, right? Initially, when you had the attacks on October 7th at the festival or whatever, there was a... I think they got the kid back, but there was a little kid. It was an infant. They got kidnapped. And, well, it was held hostage. And I think the kid... I think it's a little girl. Her, her family... Excuse me. Lost her family... In, that, in those attacks where Hamas attacked and then like the IDF was up from reports people are saying that the IDF actually caused a lot of casualties trying to attack Hamas while trying to simultaneously save civ uh, civilians which makes absolutely no sense but nevertheless you have the little kid I forget the little kid's name gets abducted we, we learn that our families passed away right because of the attacks where they were, their lives were taken. There was news coverage on that. I remember seeing several news things about that, like articles about this child and talks from her family. Who None of the family is wrong for wanting their, uh, in, their infant back, right? I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm saying that there should have been a conversation. Like Now that we're at this point, the lives of the two, because the little girl... Little Israeli baby girl that got, that was a hostage, I think still a hostage. I don't think they got her back yet. Little Israeli girl that's a hostage. All of these warm, sad articles, videos about getting her back 
interviewing her family, talking about the loss of her mom and dad, all of these things, right, about this child. Then on the flip side, you have Hein, who's calling, crying, begging for her life, trying to find help, gets help, ends up losing her life, everybody around her losing their lives. You have the, gov the U.S. government trying to justify it as like, oh, I mean, you know, sometimes casualties of war. Same question on, on Hindra job, though, to follow up on, I think, what the point Matt was trying to make. You've said you've urged Israel to investigate her killing, respond very quickly, and take accountability if they find something's wrong. I think Matt's point, though, is that you've urged a lot of accountability, a lot of investigations, and we don't have evidence of them coming back with accountability. Should there be a second level investigation into her killing? Uh, if, again, if, it's if hard to not satisfied with what they it, again. It's with. hard to comment on a second level before we've concluded the first level. Um, we want to see the uh, government of Israel investigate this matter. If they find that um, somebody behaved uh, inappropriately or violation of law, we want to see accountability. Uh, and I wouldn't want to speculate on what further measures might be appropriate before that first step has been completed. You see what I'm saying? Like now, if you had conversations, you can have like Israeli people. Or people, period, saying like, wait a minute. I thought this was about protecting women and children, right? She's still a child. So this ch these both are children. So this one's a child and this one's a casualty of war? What are, what are we doing? Like, you have Israeli people right now. I don't know if they're reporting on the media like that. I know there was a German outlet I found that was showing that Israeli people are protesting the fact that there's still 126 hostages that haven't been saved. And it's are boiling over on the streets of Tel Aviv, meanwhile, with demands for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to resign. 136 hostages are still being held by Hamas in Gaza, and their families are running. They're trying to figure out, so what's this all about? Like, and don't get me wrong, those people that want their family back, they shouldn't want their family back. I saw some people saying, like, oh, why they aren't talking about the people that passed away in Palestine? It's like, there's a whole lot of problems with the inhabitants of stolen Palestine, a.k.a. Israel, to begin with, right? But if we're just talking about it on a human level of people who want their family members back, the fact that Bibi and them said, yeah, this is about getting those people back. We're going to destroy Hamas by any means. And then... They just are indiscriminately bombing. And said to the foreign media not long ago, pay attention, a pregnant woman cut open. Cut open. Oh. Guys, the things that happen are so sick. This is not a Netflix show and it's not a cable news show. None of that. No, this is real life. That also didn't happen. So many terrible, cruel things happened. Some of the most cruel things that can be done to a human being on 7 of October. Mickey Rosenthal, why were these things that didn't happen said? All right, and they go into... Aza, mechuteret. Anachu poalim betocha. Anachu maamikim et alachatz al Hamas midei sha'a, midei yom. Ad ko chisalnu alfei mechablim, me'al ha-karka u'mitachat la-karka. Killing over 20,000 people, I think over 10,000 children. Um, and then you have family members storming the Knesset, family members protesting constantly, wanting this, this disgusting government out because they are like, fam, what about our family? I thought this was about the hostages. What are we doing? I thought you, who, what is this really about then? Like, what are we really doing? And it's about like monies because if you allow them to do what they're doing, they're going to take the rest of Palestine. They already got in the West Bank heavy, constantly taking land and killing people over there. There's a lot of death there with uh, settlers. They call them settlers. They're really colonizers. What's wild is a lot of those colonizers are from America. Some of them are from New York. Some colonizers come from New York. Nevertheless, colonizers. And the way that they come from New York is because they have a right to return. If you know what right to return is, right to return is basically if you have any... Jewish ancestry, and you can prove it or whatever, and you get a recommendation, you can just go to Israel and that help you set up and settle somewhere. Settle meaning take a Palestinian person's home. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, Yami.
Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But this, it's you... easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you. No. But um, it's all about you realize that it's, it's it's all about money. But if you have conversations, you can have Palestinians talking to Israeli people, which they already do, and realize like, oh, this is they're against both of, both of us, like. You'll have Jewish people fighting for Palestinian people, which a lot do. They don't get any media coverage because, again, conversation rules the nation. I can tell and I never write my wrongs and write them down for real. P.S. Sorry. But if you have people having conversation, you'll have them figuring out who's the actual issue. And when you figure out who the actual issue is, you can deal with the actual issue. And they don't want you to deal with the actual issue. They would rather we just all argue and try to figure out who, as far as in the West, who's going to be the next old white man in, in office. Um, as far as overseas, just we just going to keep bombing and, take, and taking land. As far as Israel, they just want, they want all of Gaza and Palestine or whatever. They, they figure that out. They want the canals so they can have better trade. They want Jordan, they want Yemen, they want all these places and they really want to kill everybody in Iran. They want to fight Pakistan, they want everybody. They want to do, they want, they, they want war, dog. How you want to blow this spot? I see some dirty cops, sorry. I'm just having rap moments. Um, But please, realize that you need to stand on something at a time like this. And that's just being a good person. Like for me, it's just knowing I'm, I'm black, so I'm good. I'm good. As long as I say black and die, that's all I got to do. But in that process, I'm going to do what I got to do by being a good person. So make sure you keep it do right, Kate Road. All right, peace.